There are many different types of magnesium out in the market, but which one is the best? In this video, we'll be going over the different formulations of magnesium and which one I prefer to take. Now, the first thing we'll go over really quickly is blood testing for magnesium. It's not that important to test for magnesium blood levels, and honestly, the test we have for magnesium isn't that accurate anyway. But if you are going to test for magnesium, then it's better to get the red blood cell magnesium test rather than the blood serum test. The reason for this is because majority of magnesium is inside the cells, not freely flowing around in the blood. So an RBC test will test magnesium in the red blood cells, while a blood serum test will test magnesium flowing in the bloodstream. Again, neither one is very accurate, but if I had to choose one, I would definitely go with the RBC test. Because the test isn't very accurate and because most most people are deficient in magnesium anyway, blood testing is unlikely to give any insight on your health. Also, it's very unlikely to overdose on magnesium, so it's generally pretty safe to take a low dose of magnesium without doing any blood testing for it at all. This idea does not apply to pretty much any other vitamin and mineral. Blood testing, for example, on vitamin B12 or vitamin D or calcium or iron is very beneficial and important for supplementation in terms of dosing. So although you shouldn't be taking any supplements without the recommendation of your private doctor, definitely do not do that with B12, iron, calcium, vitamin D, or pretty much all other vitamins and minerals. You do wanna get blood tested to figure out the correct dosing. Now, symptoms of magnesium deficiency include muscle cramping, sleep disturbances, stress, anxiety, constipation, heart palpitations, and headaches. I myself have experienced restless legs, heart palpitations, headaches, and constipation from a magnesium deficiency. Now, the recommended daily allowance of magnesium is around 380 milligrams per day. Most people do not get this amount of magnesium per day in their diet. It's estimated that about half the population is magnesium deficient by some degree. I normally track my calories and micronutrients, and I can assure you that most days I don't even get 50% of the recommended magnesium daily intake, and I eat a lot of the foods that are rich in magnesium. The foods that are high in magnesium are avocado, almonds, spinach, quinoa, flax seeds, Brazil nuts, bananas, and salmon to name a few. So basically you can try to get enough magnesium in your diet, but it is gonna be difficult for most people. And if you're not trying to get magnesium in your diet, you're most likely deficient in it because you're not eating enough of the foods that contain magnesium. So supplementation is important. Now in terms of supplementation, magnesium does come in a bunch of different forms. So we're gonna go over some of the more popular ones to know which ones are good and which ones to avoid. The first one I'm gonna go over is magnesium aspartate, which has a high absorption rate, but aspartate is excitatory and magnesium is more calming, so they're kind of working against each other. I'm a much bigger fan of taking magnesium for its calming effects, so I don't generally recommend this version of magnesium. A similar one to magnesium aspartate is also magnesium glutamate. Both of these I do not recommend because they are excitatory and magnesium is more inhibitory. Next one we have is magnesium citrate. Now this one is good for people that have constipation. Usually comes as a liquid form as a laxative, so should not be used as a general purpose magnesium. It should basically be only used as a laxative when needed. Next up we have magnesium glycinate, which has a high absorption rate and has glycine in it. Glycine is a precursor to GABA and GABA is the opposite of aspartate as it is inhibitory, so it works synergistically with magnesium with its calming effects, helping improve calm the mind and body Body and increasing sleep quality. This is my favorite form of magnesium and I'll go into more detail on it a little bit later on in the video. Next up we have magnesium chloride which this can be used for people that have low stomach acid. Stomach acid comes as hydrogen chloride so getting more chloride in the form of magnesium chloride can help with that. Again I wouldn't generally recommend this version unless it is a very specific case but for the most part the other forms of magnesium especially magnesium glycinate are far superior. Now next up we have magnesium sulfate. This is the one that's found in Epsom salts and normally used for muscle cramping. Athletes use these Epsom salts all the time for muscle recovery and there's also an IV version which is used for preeclampsia which is specifically high blood pressure during pregnancy. Magnesium sulfates in terms of Epsom salt is recommended. It is very good for muscle recovery and lots of athletes use it. Next up we have magnesium oxide which has a low absorption rate and it's mainly only used to correct a magnesium deficiency by increasing magnesium levels. It is the most likely to cause diarrhea, so it's useful for people that are trying to correct deficiencies that have other symptoms along with it, such as constipation. But for the most part, I would again avoid magnesium oxide as magnesium glycinate is a far superior supplement. Now, the last form of magnesium that we're going to go 
over as magnesium threonate, which is pretty much as good as magnesium glycinate, but for a slightly different indication. This one can cross the blood-brain barrier and have positive effects on the brain, such as improved memory and cognition. It can also help with anxiety and ADHD, not necessarily as first-line therapy, but with mild symptoms and concerns, it can help because, again, it does cross the blood-brain barrier as the 3 and 8 helps the magnesium get there. Now, before I go into more detail on magnesium glycinate and magnesium 3 and 8, I want to give a quick shout-out to the sponsor of the channel, Do Not Age. Do Not Age is a company that is dedicated to to extending lifespan and health span for as many people as possible. They have amazing products on their website, do not age.org, that are specifically for longevity. And one of them is actually a vitamin D3, vitamin K2, and magnesium blend. If you've been following this channel, you know that optimizing your vitamin D and magnesium levels are extremely important for energy, sleep, bones, and much more. Use my code Elevate Wellness at checkout for 10% off. Now let's get back to the video. Okay, so again, magnesium is involved in many mechanisms regarding our energy in ATP, DNA, and muscle. Now, the benefits of magnesium glycinate is that it's better absorbed than almost all of the other different magnesium formulations. It's gentler on the stomach, and it can increase insulin sensitivity, help with headaches and migraines, and improve sleep quality. In terms of dosing, we want to start on the lower end and gradually increase if necessary. I would start with 100 to 200 milligrams daily and go up to the maximum dose of 400 milligrams per day, although I find that 200 milligrams of magnesium glycinate is more than enough really no need to go above that unless you are not getting any magnesium in your diet in which case i would recommend eating more magnesium rich foods and sticking with the 200 milligram dose instead of upping to the maximum of 400 milligrams and not changing your diet at all now magnesium glycinate is magnesium and glycine so we talked about magnesium now we'll discuss a little bit more about glycine glycine is a inhibitory neurotransmitter meaning it has a relaxing and calming effect on the mind and body that's that's why it works nicely and synergistically with magnesium, especially for improved sleep quality. Now, just as good as magnesium glycinate is probably magnesium L3 and 8. This one is a little bit better for brain health and memory and focus because it is able to cross the blood brain barrier and have its effects directly on the brain. So, if you're looking for a magnesium supplement more for sleep, I would stick with magnesium glycinate. Or if you're looking for a magnesium supplement more for the brain, I would go with magnesium 3 and 8. Now, in terms of side effects, the side effects of magnesium normally come into play when you take an excess amount. Usually that includes diarrhea or upset stomach, which is the first sign that you might be taking too much magnesium. So you might want to lower your dose or lower your magnesium intake altogether. If you continue taking a high dose of magnesium past that point for a long time, it's possible now to start experiencing heart palpitations and reduced blood pressure. So again, what I would do is avoid magnesium oxide and magnesium aspartate. I would only take magnesium chloride or magnesium citrate for specific indications such as constipation or increasing stomach acid in my body but the ones i would definitely take are magnesium glycinate for sleep or magnesium 3 and 8 for brain functionality if i wanted those benefits that's it for this video thank you all for watching and i'll see you next time